Welcome back. Veteran music journalist Larry LeBlanc runs a songwriter's workshop here in Orillia for the Mariposa Folk Foundation each month. Recently, he brought Murray McLaughlin along with him. <laughs> and we're thwarting some young person's career. They have both known Gordon Lightfoot professionally and personally for many decades. I'm the only uh, journalist that has a Juno Award uh, over its 40-year uh, history. I've been covering uh, Canadian music since the uh, 1960s. I worked with Ian and Sylvia for some time. Uh, I've worked in every phase of music that you can think of. Um, I'm uh, renowned around the world. I travel to a lot of concerts and a lot of uh, conferences around the world. I think my initial thought was, what was Gordon going to think about it? Is And I think half of them would be absolutely in awe, and half of them would be in horror, and half of them, when he woke up and started thinking about it, would go, boy, that's, that's really, really cool. Gordon has an attachment uh, to Roya like I've never seen anybody have to their uh, hometown. A lot of people get away from their hometowns, they don't honor them, they don't go back to them, they don't want to be thought of you know, that way. But you say, uh, Aurelia, the Gordon, uh, and he gets almost teary-eyed, you know, in talking about it. It is his root, it's where he is. I think he's very honored, but my first thought was, oh my gosh, Gordon's <laughs> gonna get a statue. Well, how's Gordon gonna react to this? And apparently he's fine, I've talked to him. He's, he's very, very happy about it. Gordon, uh, myself, uh, my two managers, each had separate apartments, and the True North Records offices and the Finkelstein Fiedler Management offices were all in the circular apartment building behind Maple Leaf Garden, so we were all in the building. So we'd all run into each other at, in the elevator. We all would go up and have drinks at Gord's apartment. He would come down, you know, Kathy Smith, who was living with him at the time, would come down and hang out. So there were, you know, there was quite a, a lot of crossover. But I actually first met Gordon, uh, would, would be probably 60, 69 when I came back from living in New York City and uh, I got invited up to a party that was at Lightfoot's house, a uh, big house he had. Uh, Dylan was in town I think, uh, Ronnie Hawkins was there and uh, Bobby Newworth, uh, Dylan's pal. There were some members of the band that were there at the time too so it was like a you know it was one of those big kind of all-nighters and uh, I think I ended up playing pool with Gordon that night and that's kind of the first time I really got to meet his acquaintance. I've always maintained that if Canada had a Mount Rushmore, Gordon should be on it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, you know, I mean, I remember back in the day when, you know, before Gordy was a star unto himself, his songs like Ribbon of Darkness were being cut by people like Marty Robbins. They were being cut by people, people like Peter, Paul, and Mary. He was already like a star songwriter long before he was ever a star recording artist. But he's been a guy who, for a very, very long time, has made a major footprint in the music industry, in the, in the world, throughout the world, and particularly in the United States, which gets a lot of traction in Canada. Um, so, you know, Gordon has written quintessentially Canadian songs, which is interesting to me because the ones that people think of as Canadian, the Edmund Fitzgerald or the Railroad Trilogy, for instance, which was a contract piece for CBC, as I recollect. Um, aren't necessarily the ones that were his biggest hits. His biggest hits were broken-hearted, love, you know, kill me dead kind of songs. You know, so basically, I would suggest that they should put up a monument to the chick who caused him to write, if you could read my mind. <laughs> my initial thought was, poor Gordy, he must be going nuts. Uh, I, I think like, I think like most people in show business, He's really very excited and happy to get the attention, but at the same time, I think he's probably totally freaked out that he's getting the attention. So I think you know he would have a complete schizophrenic reaction to having a monument put up uh, about him. And uh, you know, if it was the old days, he would probably give the artist you know a bunch of money and, to take it down. <laughs> but he probably won't do that. <laughs> I didn't think any of us would live this long. But, you know, that's what, I think that's the one dark side of having a monument erected to you. Maybe Gordon's thinking about that. As, oh my God, they're starting to go tick tock and count the seconds, you know.
it's a, it's a very bad thing when they start giving you lifetime achievement awards and stuff like that. You, know, you, you keep thinking, well, I want to write another song. I'm not ready for that. So I'm, I, I hope that Gordon's thinking about the next song he's going to write rather than... He certainly deserves a monument, but I'm pretty sure he's thinking about the next song he's going to write. When we come back, we'll meet the sculptor, Tim Schmaltz. <laughs> 